from Las Vegas, it's The Q. Covering EMC World 2016. Brought to you by EMC. And welcome back inside the Cube here in the Sands Expo, Las Vegas. I'm John Walls along with Stu Miniman. And we continue our coverage here on the Cube of EMC World 2016 by talking with Naveen Sharman, who is the Director of Product Management at uh, Scale.io. And Naveen, thanks hey, for joining us thank on the Cube. First time. It is my so, first time. Welcome indeed. to the Cube. I don't know what's taken us so long to have you on, but we certainly appreciate your stopping in today. Tell us a little bit about, if you would, first sure. about your direct responsibilities at Scale I/O and uh, your, your core competency. There. Sure, sure. So again, so uh, I joined Scale I/O probably uh, a little bit more than a year ago, and I lead the Scale I/O product management team. And what that really means is, uh, I, you know, sort of, uh, I own the roadmap for Scale I/O going forward. Right. So that's really the core of what I'm trying to do is, you know, what is Scale I/O trying to do in the future, and how does that meet customer demand and customer you know, workloads and customer, you know, what are they trying to do with Scale.io? So that's really primarily my job, is to make sure Scale.io is going where customers want to go. Yeah, so Naveen, uh, it's interesting. We've been watching Scale.io since it was an independent company. Yeah. Um, and what bucket it falls into and how it's productized is yeah. a little bit of an interesting story. So maybe yeah. you could talk about sure. kind of some of the different ways that you look at kind of the packaging and deployment of the Sure, solution. sure. So Scale.io is very interesting in the sense, you know, unlike other technologies, Scale.io was born as a software-only technology, right? So what this gives us is tremendous flexibility in terms of the hardware consumption model. So initially when EMC bought Scale.io, the only go-to-market we had was software-only. What that meant was, you know, our customers generally go buy their own um, hardware and then put Scale.io and, and there we go. Uh, but going forward, what we're also doing is, as, you know, as David Goulden mentioned already this morning, is you know, we're actually putting Scale.io in a lot of other things. To, to make it, why? It's just to ease the consumption of Scale.io. So the first way we're doing that was VX Rack system. Right? If you look at VX Rack system, under the covers, it is run with Scale.io. And then, you know, going forward, you'll probably hear about the new announcement coming by, and you know, there's a lot of other things powered by Scale.io. So what we're really looking at is, you know, software only, right? We're also looking at fully engineered appliance with VxRack system, and we have something called VxRack Node that's kind of a in-between options for those exact customers. Yeah. So that's really, you know, how we see The other thing I'm wondering sure. if you can help educate our, our, sure. our, our audience on is, it has that kind of hyper-converged feature, very scale-out architecture. Yeah. It can also be just a scale-out software-defined storage. Exactly. You know, without the compute. So, kind of, can you explain where those two fit? Sure, sure. Uh, so, Scale.io architecturally, like you mentioned, can be run in what we call two-layer mode, which is traditional, you know, scale-out storage, or you can run in hyper-converged, right? And uh, the reason we sort of designed with that was that, you know, customers ultimately want flexibility. Right, it's never either or, and what we see is that customers, roughly half of them, go to a storage uh, two-layer uh, mode, and the other half stay with hyperconverged. And the real question becomes why customers choose either or, and the answer is really it's it's got to do more with internal processes and operations rather than the technology itself. We build scale IO that it really does not matter in terms of you know the functionality; it's pretty much the same. But what it gives you is that you know if you're more of a traditional enterprise and you have a, a siloed organization where you have you know an app dev team. Uh, a server team, a network team, a storage team, you don't necessarily need to break the, that, that infrastructure, that, that process you already have. You know? And we see bigger customers like Citi, who talked about this morning, you know, they're going with a two-layer approach whereby they get a, all the value of a true scale out in a block storage based on x86 architecture, right? but they haven't moved their application there yet. And then we have other customers who've sort of hyper-converged everything into this one building block of both compute and storage. And at the end of the day, it's really about customer choice, and we see that you know, it's something we're going to carry on you know, as long as Scale.io is around. Okay, so it's not necessarily the size of customer, it's just in use cases. Um, Talk about service providers, maybe, because sure. we we I've talked to some people that yeah. just said architecturally, yeah. compute and storage scale very differently for service providers versus some of the enterprises. So. Exactly. So usually, you know, uh, what we hear about is, you know, uh, when you sort of have a compute and storage in the same block, right? As you're scaling up, you know, you may have applications that have more compute than storage, and vice versa. So that definitely plays a, a role. But one of the great things about scale IO is we can actually kind of circumvent that because there's nothing di preventing customers from mixing the modes, right? You could traditionally be a hyper-converged and what you find out is, oh, my application just needs more storage performance and not compute. You can actually just add in just the storage portion without the compute and that works totally fine. And in terms of S like, you know, service provider, what we see is 
those guys actually, you know, we're seeing are very conscious about cost and making sure they're, in, you know, delivering at a very good cost, uh, you know, dollar per gig or you know, dollar per CPU. And actually, we see some of them actually looking at hyperconverge as well because at that point, you know, their capex is even lower because end of the day, you know, your footprint is cut in half. You're utilizing most of your server a lot, right? So I think it's a little bit of, you know, either or, and it really depends on what is the customer value, what's the internal processes, and how willing are they to kind of go with a different paradigm. You know, if you talk about, sure. um, you know, we're, we're storage is today, obviously, with so much data coming in, right? Yeah. From, from so many areas. How do you maintain, in terms of speed, making sure that I can extract the information that I need in, in, a, in a, a fairly reasonable amount of time, or, yeah. or even quicker, right? Yeah. Because I need it now, now, now. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, bandwidth, I mean, you've got to deal with that. Sure, sure. You? I think uh, Scala is a little bit different in terms of architecturally compared to other traditional arrays. You know, usually traditional arrays tend to be kind of dual controller arrays, and at some point, you know, that's all the performance you're going to get. So, you know, even if you put all flash drives in the back, you know, you would be, you would hit a limit and there's no way around it. Scale.io takes a completely different approach where you know, all the IOs are parallelized across the entire cluster, right? Whereby you can just add another node if you ever need more capacity or more performance, and architecturally, inherently, it's not dependent on uh, you know, any kind of hardware controller anywhere in the data path, right? And that's actually really the secret sauce of Scale.io is it really will allow you to go from three nodes to a thousand node, and you get linear performance all the way through, yeah. right? And uh, that's really fundamentally what we wanted to solve, and I think we've done a pretty good job. Yep, so you know, definitely scale out architectures, sure. we're seeing that in EMC's Isilon product. Yeah. Um, you talk about kind of applications. You sure. Know, what applications are a good fit, and maybe are there, are there certain applications that just sure. wouldn't be great? Sure. So I think you know the key use case we actually think about Scale.io for is actually something you, you, you know, Wikibon has mentioned recently. It's really about true private cloud. And what does true private cloud mean? And it was the notion that actually you know, Wikibon brought up in terms of how do you have a, um, a true uh, private cloud when you have gen, uh, traditional monolithic infrastructure underneath, right? So what you're really saying in that notion is, look, I can have service portal, pay as you grow, all these things, but I have to point and be limited by my underlying infrastructure. So I think Scale.io kind of changes that, where we're really saying, look, if you really want a true private cloud, where you want to be like the Amazons of the world, the Googles of the world, whereby, you know what, you start with three nodes and you keep adding nodes, you know, and you get the flexibility, the agility that you know, David Gulen talked about this morning. That's really the key, I think, the use case for Scale.io. And on top of that, it's always about, you know, it's an always on architecture. And what I mean by that is, you know, for the application level, you have scale IO that it's, you know, gets volumes from, and underneath, it's different hardware. And as your hardware refreshes, it's completely oblivious to the upper level application, and there's no migration, there's none of that, right? And you're never bound by frame boundaries. If you want to grow your application, just grow, just add a node. And I think that's really the use case there is really a true infrastructure service okay. is what Scale.i is really built yeah. for. So, it, it, Wikibon, when we laid forth the true private cloud, yeah. you know, I, I could definitely see kind of the uh, the flexibility and the agility of kind of a scale-out architecture yeah. uh, lends itself towards that. Can you talk about some of the operational models? Sure. Uh, obviously, you, you talked about monolithic storage, but yeah. how do the operational model change and how does Scale.i know enable sure. that? Uh, with all SDS, right, in the heart of it, when, it, when we you know, start sort of digging around trying to talk to customers, it comes down to what SDS provides you is really agility. Agility in terms of your CapEx model, agility in terms of your OpEx model. And it really is around, look, it's the same x86 you know, hardware that's in every machine out there. You know, nobody's doing their own system on chip or ASIC anymore. So it's pretty much you know, driven by the same hardware. Hard drive, same exact thing. We're not going and creating any hard drive. So you know, what we see is physically, you know, even traditional arrays versus scale IO is the same thing. But what it changes is, in terms of the buying model, you don't have to sort of right size your application or your storage for three years down the line, right? You just buy you know, however nodes you need today for your workload today, and then growing is a different operational model whereby you know, city goes from nothing to up and functional in 34 days, including procurement, right? So that's just much more powerful in terms of how do you turn that cash and get revenue a lot quicker than traditional race. And second, it's a notion of if you never have to uh, migrate, you never have to, you know, have a siloed uh, approach that adds tremendous operational cost savings because 
you can have a lot of different applications running on the same infrastructure, and you can just keep adding that and growing that rather than managing silos of infrastructure. Okay. Can you talk about sure. what management frameworks and kind of you know maybe DevOps tools that this sure, plugs sure. into? Sure, sure. So uh, Scilio is also you know built to in the notion of we want to be agile, we want to be flexible. So everything we do is based on REST APIs, right? So the whole overall stack can be managed scripts. Nobody has to physically go touch anything. So I think that's how you really tackle it. And when we talk to the largest customers, that tends to be true. Like when you ask them, hey, how do you deploy it? It tends to be, we have an automated script, either you know, you know, vRealize suite, OpenStack, or something homegrown, right? Like Ansible, or Chef, or Puppet. And we have uh, all the richness in our REST API that customers can just use those to you know, bring up a cluster, manage the cluster, move things around. So it's all automated and all scripted. Okay, great. You talked about City uh, sure. be, being one of the showcase customers. Any other customers that are presenting at the, the show or customers you could talk about? Uh, I don't think anybody else is presenting, but you know, you can go to like uh, the Skill.io website and the, we do have collateral with actual names of really big customers that are around. Uh, but again, City's the only one this year presenting. Hopefully next year we'll have more customer showcases as well. Well, Nabin, before you take off, sure. I, I, I happen to notice on your LinkedIn profile, you said a third geek, a third business and a third TBD. Yeah. Now how close are you to deciding what that third TBD is going to be? Every time I'm ready to commit, you know, my wife usually tells me, "No, that probably doesn't suit you." <laughs> so I, I'm hoping, you know, the TBD will remain there for a life because that's where you know gets me excited about Skillio and everything else is just new opportunities, and you know. It's, uh, I like to keep it that way. I, I think it's just like you're offering, it's nice to be flexible and uh, to leave exactly. exceptional you performance never know, for down so the road. Exactly. All right, okay. Navin Sharman, thanks for being, oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, I was just, if, if you could bring us home with kind sure. of the, you know, the, the 2.0 yeah. uh, announcement was a couple yeah. months ago, I believe, just yeah. you know, for, sure. for those that haven't seen it. Uh, so you I know. think 2.0, uh, the key core messaging we talked about was, you know, it's uh, public cloud agility with private cloud resiliency. And what 2.0 really did was, you know, all the value and goodness of scale I.O., it brought it up to another level for enterprises. And what we mean by that, we had you know, full LDAP AD integration, we had support for a lot more of component level validation, you know, end-to-end -end checksum. You know, those are all key things that enterprises cared really about and we brought it you know, to that notion, right? And again, as you will see Scale.io evolve, we're going to keep making sure that we're covering more and more use cases and doing more, such that at the end of the day, you know, customers don't have to you know, manage around it, right? So that's, our end goal is how do we serve the customer best? So what are you hearing from the market then? It's been out, what, two months, two and a half months, something sure. like that? Oh, I mean, it's a great reception, right? Yeah. Uh, again, I would go back to City again, you know, they talked about 2.0 specifically and how it brought them into a pretty much mainline with every other enterprise things we've seen. And with 2.0, also we added a lot of uh, support for OpenStack, that's one of the big thing uh, that customers talk about with, with that we sort of became upstream with Liberty and had Ubuntu support as well. So given those things, you know, we have a lot of traction with 2.0 and hopefully we can just continue on that momentum. Right, very good. Well, thank you for joining us and again, good luck with that last third. Thank you so much. But well, leave, let me know if you have any advice. You know, no, I think you're doing so. fine. Leave your options open. <laughs> Sounds All great. Right, Levin Sharma, we appreciate that. Back with more here from uh, EMC World 2016 here at the Sands Expo on theCUBE right after this. It's always fun to come back to theCUBE.